Meeting is called to order. South Hampton Town Planning Board, Thursday, July 12, 2018. The Secretary will call the roll. Chairman Zinnerdy. Present. Vice Chair Blaney. Present. Secretary is here. Board Member LaFaro. Present. Board Member Zuccarelli. Present. Board Member Long is absent. Very Board good. Member Burke. Present. We have a quorum, sir, ready to go. Very good. Could you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any minutes to approve? No, the note-making machine's on summer break. Oh, boy. <laughs> all right, Anthony, you going to start us off? Uh, yeah, actually, Matt was going first, um, but I'm just, while well, he's going to do something, I'm just going to take care of Anthony Krill first. Oh, okay, Anthony Krill. And that's item six. 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 I have copies of the pre-app report, um, if you don't want to use the ones on the Jesus. Where am I in this? Where did you put me here? Oh, here, I, I got it. I'm okay. okay. I got it. I got it. All right. So prepared. I love it. Actually, I'll probably need one of those reports for myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, I remember this one. <laughs> no, you, you, this has been going on a while. This is yeah. the property um, in Quiet on the corner of the highway, um, on Hawk <coughs> Highway and South Country Road. Um, this property, uh, you may recall, and if you look at the aerials that are attached also, it's in the R20 zoning district. Uh, this is a property that has a CO from 1978 that accounts for uh, four single-family residences and I think a garage, maybe a shed. Um, I gave you a copy of that survey from that pre-existing CO, uh, which is in red. So you could see that's the only record that we have for this property. And as we know, that it's been um, greatly expanded. Previously, it was a you know a non-conforming use with four single-family residences on a property. And over the years, um, some new structures have been built. Uh, some of the existing structures have been uh, converted to multifamily. Uh, there's a lot going on in the property. It's been well kept over the years, uh, pretty under the radar. Uh, we appreciate the applicant actually reaching out to us and uh, submitting the application. They weren't prompted uh, by violation or anything. They came to us to, to try to rectify it. Um, and so um, it's actually really not that complicated of a report because there's only so much this board could do. Um, but on the first page, I just do a um, description of the property we just discussed. Uh, conformance with zoning on pages one and two, I identify the structures that are actually covered. Um, and then I note that this is the only item of record and that subsequent to that CO, uh, the property has been expanded over the years. Um, was also subdivided uh, and assigned tax map numbers, uh, but it never went through a subdivision process. So, you know, those lots aren't recognized by the town. Um, so the applicant came in with a proposed subdivision plan, uh, shows four lots. I gave you a copy of on the 11 by 17. Um, and uh, I I've basically listed um, lots one through four in this report that identify in some capacity the nonconformities. Um, it, it identifies if the existing structure was expanded or if a new structure was built. Um, and I sort of outlined it uh, there and each of the lots obviously have uh, issues. As you can see, everything has been expanded over the years. Um, on page three of the report, I didn't finish my sentence on the comprehensive plan, uh, but I think what I was going to say there is that, um, uh, as it relates to the comprehensive plan, the property in its current state, even in its previous state, doesn't really comply with any zoning standards of, of the town code. It's a pre-existing property, so there wouldn't be anything in the comp plan in particular. Um, the park requirements, typically, you know, we have a four lot subdivision with four pre-existing residences, so there would be no park requirement. Should any additional density be considered at some point, you know, by the zoning board, then, you know, that would be applicable, but um, at this point it's not. Uh, it's an unlisted action under SECRA. Uh, it's just a standard plan. There's no cluster required with this one. Uh, it's a minor review. Uh, not subject to Long Island Workforce Housing, uh, unless, of course, uh, there's approval for more than five uh, dwelling units, in which case the Long Island Workforce Housing does kick in, um, and that's really going to be dependent on uh, the results of anything with the Zoning Board. Um, we had a public hearing on January 11th, 
uh, followed by a 10 day written comment period and we didn't receive any comments. Uh, we did referrals. The town engineer noted that there wasn't uh, you know, much going on. So they're just recommending a two inch rain uh, fall drainage um, and an easement. Obviously the property operates with two access points, one off of Montauk, one off of South Country. Uh, and uh, obviously if the properties were going to have common access in the future as part of the four lot subdivision we would need to establish easements based on the current configuration in any case um, department of public safety didn't have anything uh, or any specific comments relating to firefighting uh, same thing with the fire district uh, the health department doesn't have a pending application but we know that the final approval will require health department approval uh, the dpw did come back with some comments um, there's some structures within the Montauk Highway right away that they're going to want removed. Um, and then I also uh, note, and it's in the report, there's actually some on the, the South Country Road, um, some encroachments into the down right away that would have to be addressed. Um, and we didn't get any comments from the CAC. So my comments and recommendations at this point, number one, um, simply just identifies uh, the pre-existing CO and what it covered. Um, number two talks about the expansion um, that happened over the years. I do note in there that the planning board would be supportive of a four lot subdivision based on a pre existing CO that covered four single family residences. There would be no density being created as a result of subdividing the lots. The lots would still require relief from the zoning board um, because they have four residences on a lot that's under you know 60,000 square feet in the R20 zoning district but that's a subdivision I think this board you know would entertain because again we would simply be creating lots for existing structures um, the third point I make on page six is that that aside there's really nothing in the subdivision regulations that this board could utilize to entertain the application as proposed by the applicant and that's why I note in there that what happened over the years has been basically an expansion of a non-conforming use. Um, and the only board that could consider an expansion of a non-conforming use is a zoning board, is, is the zoning board. Um, so I, I point that out in there that that's where this application is going to have to go, obviously, not to just create the lots, but to address any of the expansions um, that happened over the years. I note in point three that the, the relief is substantial. Uh, and I anticipate that removal of structures and elimination of rental units will likely be required in order to rectify and minimize the nonconformities. Um, I don't know how the board feels about that. Did we specify that? Well, it just I said. Mean, I mean, I'm just a question oh, sure. before you go on. I mean, looking at the the map now, it looks like there are two houses on lot four. That's right. Two houses on lot one. Yep. And you'll see in my report, I identify those in the report. Under the proposed subdivision, lots one through four, I actually list if there's two houses on there, if it's multifamily. So I do identify to some extent the nonconformity. So the second house that was built was built? Correct. Without any site plan? Correct. correct. Right. That's correct. Um, number four, at minimum, the structures that were built without any approval should be removed, while some consideration may be given by the ZBA for the expansion of the legally pre-existing structures and then I point out that section of the code 33167 it's it's the zoning board section of the code they're the ones that are going to look at it but that's the the provisions it talks about a maximum expansion of 50 percent of floor area and it talks about a maximum density standards and they're going to have to make that case to the zoning board um, because they're the only agency so these are the original those that's the original in red and so they appear here but then they've been added on correct is this, um, is this our advisory report also to the ZBA? I say, uh, you'll see at the end here. Um, I'll get to it in a second. Um, number five, I talk about the DPW requirements um, as well as uh, access easements that might be needed in the future. Uh, number six, also with the removal of structures within the, the, the county right away and the town right away. Uh, number seven, the property is partially located within the uh, water quality improvement, high priority area. So if it's partially within, then the subdivision will need to conform. And I know that um, as part of any health department approval for this, they're going to require that the structures get, um, the septic gets uh, upgraded for all structures. Is, um, this is in the area where they require the... Yeah, partially. Pa the property is partly in it. And I believe the way the code reads, if it's partly in, it's in. It's in. Yeah. Uh, and eight, here's what I said, Dennis. You can tell me what you think. I said, because it's not known what relief is being sought at this point, 
and it's sort of a fluid application. My thought, Dennis, was when we get a formal zoning board application and we know exactly what was submitted to the ZBA, that I would come back before this board. So we're telling the ZBA send us send us the application as opposed to typically we use these as our referrals. Yeah, yeah we, we do. Do um, you want to state that? That we're m more clearly that we want to... I envision no. what I, I would recommend the ZBA, and this is more on our advisory Please. board, is for the zoning board to retain uh, an architect or engineer to do uh, uh, an evaluation of all the structures. Some of these structures might be teetering and ready to, or, or the integrity might not be the best, and those would be the structures to be proposed to be removed, whereas other structures may, may um, be worthy of rehabilitation. And that's something the zoning board, they're going to need that information before they make a determination. But I'm thinking that's something we would send them back in an advisory. Yeah, we would. Mm -hmm. So let's um, I can certainly add that. Yeah. Let's tell them that we want to get have an advisory report done. Just for a curiosity, if you remove a building that's or a unit, does that trigger a health department approval? Because you're taking away. You're no, the, the trigger, that wouldn't be the trigger. The trigger is a subdivision. Um, or trying to do anything on the property, really. Um, you know, and the new regulations for septic, yeah. Um, but, you know, the trigger is going to be the, the subdivision here. And, and remedying the nonconformities to the extent that they can. So, Dennis, just to be clear, so I'm going to add that about the evaluation of structures analysis by an architect, uh, but that you want me to say the zoning board, we want a formal referral and we will right. give As you an advisory report. Fine. I could, I could be number, number four, though, on his report is, I think, quite clear as to what you're saying, and you, you have language that's very specific. Maybe we could just add an E or an A that we suggest uh, well, that's, that's being structural evaluation. The code. That, that's being Section 330, Yeah, that's so. quote unquote. But yeah, I could put I could put it wherever in the report. Um, that makes sense. I kind of like that, Dennis. I mean, it gives them some guidance, you know. Yeah. I like. Uh, well, I'm, I'll I'll edit it with your comment, right. um, and of course I'll send it to you guys just to make sure I've done it correctly. Um, but other than that, you know, really, Thomas, what more is there right. to say? There's, yeah. you know, it's it, it is what it is. Your premise, Dennis, when we first started this was start off with the fact that we're doing four lots and we have four existing residences. And that's really, you know, where, where this premise starts and, and uh, we see where it goes from there. I don't know if the applicant had any yeah, further. Once again, you've drawn the short straw on applications. <laughs> I don't know how you find them. Get the beauties. <laughs> they find me. They find you <laughs> very well. They do. Uh, for the applicant, James N. Hume, 323 Mill Road, West Hampton Beach. Um, good afternoon. Uh, I, I've re read the report and I don't really have any issues with the, with the, with the, with the report itself. Just. Uh, real briefly, as we may have talked about before, the, the, the adventure that is this property began with my client's grandparents. And they acquired the properties, they started building, then the properties fell to my, uh, uh, my client's parents. Uh, when, and they were the last one to make any changes on this property at all, and then by uh, virtue of inheritance laws, my client ended up with uh, this pig in a poke, if you will. Um, and uh, being the, the nature of the person that he is, he, he didn't want to he didn't want to leave this to his daughter. Uh, so that's why he, uh, he came to us and came to me and uh, asked me to, to proceed. And as Anthony indicated, the, the, uh, the crux of the subdivision as it pertains to you guys is we do have a CO that legal, legalizes at least four residences and we've drawn the line so that there's one legal residence on each of the lots. And obviously we need to go to the zoning board to talk about setbacks and accessory apartments and expansions and, and that kind of stuff. So. Uh, that's where we're headed, and uh, we'll be happy when we're done there and we can come back here. But, uh, but uh, we shall see. But uh, the re as far as the report itself goes, it's it's appropriate. Okay, very good. Any uh, so Anthony, I guess we'll just adopt a motion to accept adopt the report. <coughs> report. Correct. Yeah. Do, do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Jack. Second. Second. second by uh, Phil on the second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Six yes, one absent. Thanks again. Good to see you. Okay, same here. Uh, yeah. Anthony, you might as well keep going because Matt was here. And, or did you want to? Yeah, I'll do number 10 real quick. 10 real quick. Matt's birthday, so he wants to get out. That has a nice ring to it. 10 real quick. Um, that's just the Feral building. Oh, okay. Uh, John asked us to be put off, extended the action deadline until August 9th. August 9th, very good. Do we have a motion? 
Motion. Motion by uh, Blaney, second by Phil. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Extension six yes, one absent. I'll come back then. Okay. Claire, are you jumping in? No, no, no. Nope. Uh, I'm not. Max out there. No. Let me just uh, yeah. keep going. Keep going. <laughs> keep going. Okay. Hey, number 14. 14, okay. Ocean View. Ocean View. So, Case, I don't know if the aerial comes back. I have some more here. We have. I'm just going to finish the okay. right. Um This is, I put. It, I think I've attached it. There should be a road. An aerial. An aerial and even a site. Survey. We have an aerial. No survey? No survey. Okay. So I'll just show it to you. There's several <clears throat> Ocean Views. Is this the one off Middle Line? Yeah, which one is this? No, this one uh, comes off of Ocean View Parkway. Do you want yeah. one? Which oh, which? Anthony? Yeah. Is there are a number of Ocean Views. Yeah. Is this yeah, Ocean this view? is Ocean View Part 2. I don't know if it's specific. The middle uh, line. Like, no. what's it near? But, um. The ocean. Let me just it, show you what it, we have the, the ones about. that I know about, they're certainly not <laughs> near any ocean. Oh, I know. <laughs> but do they have an ocean view? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Hence the I've name. never seen it. So this property, which you have the aerial, is improved uh, in the development section. They're just seeking to do road abandonments to the north, uh, <clears throat> Post Avenue, and then to the west, uh, Park uh, Avenue. Uh, it's very simple. It's very straightforward. The only issue is... Um, there's no issue with Post uh, Park Avenue. There is coming up Grove Avenue. There is a driveway that's serving this property over here. We don't know at this point if it's on the portion that's proposed to be abandoned. Um, so that's why Kim is here today. Now, I spoke with Jackie Fenlon briefly about this. She happened to come in because she handles a lot of these. And she said this board has actually looked at road abandonments like this. Sometimes they need to do an easement. Uh, sometimes, you know, depending where it's, where it's located. I don't know at this point, but I brought him in. She submitted the application, you know, just to see if this board had any, um, you know, questions or concerns about that, which is really just for the Park Avenue portion. Have we looked at the development section and yeah. seen what roads? Yeah, I have to go back and look, to be quite honest. And she was also going to try to map out or have the surveyor map out the location of the driveway. Yeah, but typically we look at the development section, Anthony. Um, yeah, there must be a section. development section. Yeah, I'm sure there is. <laughs> Pull that. I think this is the one that's around the corner from me. Okay. Yeah. So we, we might have to come back, obviously. Um, Hi, sure, we can come, come on up. Kimberly Judd, 737 Roanoke Avenue. So we're going to map up, uh, map back that driveway, but if it, it does seem to encroach into the 50 feet that we want to abandon, we can request less of an abandonment. Instead of 50 feet, we can go down to 40. I, I know that's not something you probably see a lot of, but I don't see why it would be an issue to request less of a road abandonment than, than more. So if, if it does look like the driveway is going to go into that 50 feet, I'll just, I'll just reduce the request to 40 feet. Who would retain the ownership title to that last 10 foot? Oh, your client. OK. Um, but what I was telling Anthony Kim is that we need to look at the uh, development section. Typically, that's the process. We look at it and say, oh, OK, these roads. And these abandons may be consistent with that development section. Oftentimes, we might require an amendment. Because some, sometimes you look at the development section, some of the developed parcels were subsequently acquired by the county or the town, open space, and now we no longer need the access. Okay. No, that's, I know that's yeah. standard well, operating procedure on these little yeah. file maps. We can move forward with this. Okay. But we got to do that. That's right. So I'll put it on again next time. Yeah. I'll have the, the development, development maps. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Kim. All right. So no action on No action on uh, this. Did you want Matt to jump in? Yeah, no, I'm, I... Okay, Matt. I have to wait for <laughs> You're on, brother. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Happy oh. birthday to you. Go right in order to that. Okay. You're um, approved. Get out of here. Yay! <laughs> We're going to start with three. 56 Ridge yes. Road. 56 Ridge Road. We have paper for everybody. Anybody want a paper copy? Mm -hmm. What do we have? Paper for you. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> Let's get some maps going here, folks. Maps. Okay. Oh. And is there a report? Did you have that already? Uh, yeah. Is there's there's a, it's in our, it's in our, it's in on for approval. It's a pre. It's oh, I thought it was in our. I, I think these were. It's right. in there. It but is. That, there's paper copies there also for anybody who wants paper. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. You're good. 
Everybody's good? Yeah. Good. All right. 56 Ridge Road. It's a pre-application submission for a lot line modification of 56 Ridge Road. It was received in, on February 28th. Um, it considers action on two parcels located within the R40 zoning district within the New York State Archaeological Sensitive Area um, within at, in Shinnecock Hills. Um, proposes to transfer 12,067.51 square feet from lot two to lot one on a total project area of 559,000 square feet approximately. Um, proposed lot uh, one will contain 163 672 square feet and proposed lot two will contain 395, five, 395,526 square feet. Um, the planning board held a public hearing on the proposal outline modification on May 24th, 2018, which was closed with a ten, with a 10 day written comment period. Uh, no comments were received during the public hearing nor within the written comment period. Um, in terms of referrals, fire prevention offered no requirements or recommendations. Um, this actually was referred out by the town engineer's office to um, the Rainer group, they did recommend just some mapping changes, um, some of which really you need to take an effect because the, the final map will just have the resulting lot. So they had concerns on whether those what they trans what's shown on the transfer, but on the resulting map is what they you know recommended. Um, and then in terms of other referrals, we did not receive anything back from the highway department, uh, the Southampton Fire District. Uh, the health department, nor from the Shinnecock Hills, um, Tuckahoe, Southampton, CAC. Um, it's a type two action pursuant to 157-12 of Southampton Town Code and requires no further environmental review. And in terms of findings, um, the planning board held a public hearing on May 24th. As I said, with no comments received during the hearing or within the set written comment period. Um, lot one is improved with a single family residence and accessory structures, has a lot area of 151,604. Uh, square feet prior to the transfer and lot two which is unimproved has a lot area of 407,593 square feet um, as a result of the lot line modification as I said before just over 12,000 square feet will be transferred from uh, lot two to lot one thereby creating no new lots um, lot one and lot two as they presently exist conform to the area and dimensional requirements of the R40 zoning district uh, upon the lot line modification, both lots as proposed meet the dimensional requirements of R40, um, therefore creating no new nonconformities. Um, and the proposed transfer meets the criteria for review and approval as a transfer of land. Then for uh, be it resolved, planning board hereby waives the requirements for the subdivision review per pursuant to 292-8. If you'd like, I can go through some conditions. If there's any questions, I can clarify for you. Well, on this map, sure. What, uh, there's so the land trust easement. There's an easement. The the land trucks took no objection to the application, and what's happening is, so there was a portion of the easement. Uh, sure. So this area was part of the easement that's on this property, and they had been maintaining it as long. So the transfer is actually of this area and kind of in exchange for that transfer, the land trust is going to place an easement over this part of that one. So they're going to give them the original encroachment and... Yeah, and then, and then put an easement over this area. So there's an exchange? Is it... What kind of an exchange are they making? There's just... Um, it's just legally, right? Yeah, yeah probably um, maybe development rights or... Yeah, it's just it's, as far as I know, it's just a, it's a conservation easement with the land trust that was here, and then it was approached upon, so they're going to give this to them as an easement in exchange. So the documents that I'm only asking the documents yeah. that accompany that. We, I don't have them. I mean, if we'd like to review them, I know that it's not the town's not party to it. Yeah, yeah it's a private. Maybe to yeah. those documents, we can ask to see yeah. drafts of them. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not part of the lot line modification? Or no, I mean, no. the easements is just is between the property owner yeah, and the land trust. Right, it's not I understand. a condition of the So the it's this lot that's been carved out below as lot one, right? This is lot one. This is lot two. Lot one had encroached into lot two, and the, the portion in which they encroached would, had an easement over with the land trust. So they're going to transfer the encroached area, and then they're essentially putting an easement over this area of their property. All with, with the land trust. But now is that a uh, subdivision? 
<laughs> and then the transfer. No, the, the this is they're still going to hold the, the title to this area as far as I know. There's just yes. going to be an easement. Correct. Okay. okay. Understand it better. Yeah, it's a little complicated. Yeah, yeah. A little confusing. Right. Okay. So, um, I can go through the conditions. Yes. Sure. Okay. Applicant shall make the following revisions to the lot line modification map prior to signature. <coughs> the map shall show the resulting configuration of the lots for signature. The map shall be revised to show there is high tension wires that go across the back. So it wasn't clear if there's an easement that, you know, protects we those. Really do. Yeah. Just to specify if there's an easement there or not. Um, health department approval, three, dra uh, three draft deeds with meets and bounds prior to recording as stated above. Um, execution of the property via, via transfer. Three, uh, three transfer deeds, sorry. Submission of deeds filed with the Suffolk County Clerk's Office. Um, submission of the lot line modification map to be filed under miscellaneous maps. Town attorney approval of all legal documents, title certification, mortgage consent of applicable. Um, submission of 10 copies of the transfer map and submission of the required items within 180 days. And I do have the applicant's attorney here. If you had anything to add, Katarina? No. No? Very good. That on for any questions? Approved. Straight forward. We have a motion. Motion. motion by Blaney. Second. Second by Phil. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Sorry. That's okay. One absent. Moving right along. Uh, the next, I'll kind of talk about the next two together. Oh, yes. We saw these two recently there, uh, covenant amendments um, for two foster, foster yeah. subdivisions. Four, four and five. Four and five. Um, again, I have paper if anybody would like it. Um, the <coughs> first covenant amendment, which is number four, actually is, you know, that is to change the covenant amendment to allow another lot onto the common driveway of the northerly subdivision. And the second one, which is number five, allows, you know, there's a covenant amendment, amendment seeking to go through the conservation buffer that's on the southerly um, subdivision. I believe I uploaded some subdivision maps into there. And we're eliminating the access onto Montauk Highway. It will still be there. Yeah. Because um, it's already improved to lot two, but this gives the lot two owner the ability to come in North Woodmill. Correct. I do have these on to approve the covenant amendments. We did, you know, there's a public hearing back on June, so the last meeting, June 28th. Um, oh, that makes good planning. Much that makes sense to me. I mean, I know on the on the southerly one, I know a neighboring property owner did have the concern to locate it, the access towards the center of the lot, so it's not close to their their lot line. Right. Um, and I did offer that as a condition on resolution for number five that was um, the second the first one. the second one because that involves going through the e through the conservation buffer okay. so we want the access closer to so if you look let me show you on the map. I've got it on the ice yeah the conservation but the 25 foot conservation buffer runs along the northern part of the map right and there's two Adjacent property owners, one to the east, one to the west. You know, the westerly <coughs> property owner on the southern subdivision requests just that the access point be located not right on his lot line, closer to the center of lot two on that William and Roseanne Foster map. Okay, toward the center. So, do we know what's the frontage of that? Line? The, 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 uh, lot the two. total, I'm not sure. No. 156. 156. 156. So, no access in the first 50 foot, maybe. Okay. That's typically. That's fine. That's what we're proposing. Okay. okay. We told Mr. Foster, mm -hmm. who was there at the, the hearing, here to the east. Yeah. The plan is to put it closer to the center or west of that okay. that location. Yeah. So that's fine. That would be a covenant. Mm -hmm. But we're amending the covenant, so that will be part of the amendment. Part of the that's covenant. Amendment. Okay. That's okay. absolutely fine. Good. Just identify yourself, Wayne. Wayne Berlin for for the applicant Joseph Mantella. Okay. Um, so do you have that on approval? I can go through the resolution. Yeah, let's look at the conditions. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Uh, this one. This one. Thank you. Uh, 
the conditions are? Well, the conditions for number four. Um, the plan board hereby authorizes the recording of an amended covenant and amendment for the common driveway easement of final plan reduced density plan subdivision map of R. Foster to allow a fourth lot identified as 1720 Montauk Highway to have access over uh, the said common driveway easement subject to the following. So submission of title certification and mortgage consent if app applicable, approval of, of the amended covenant and supplemental legal documents by the town attorney and submission of a copy of the recorded amendment code. Uh, recorded amendment code. We can act on that uh, yeah. first. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Phil. Second. Second by uh, Zuccarelli. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Six yes. <coughs> and then we'll look at the conditions of uh, yes. item five on the item agenda. Five. Uh, planning board hereby authorizes the recording of an amended covenant to allow access through a 25 foot conservation <coughs> buffer located within lot two of the subdivision map of William and Roseanne Foster to provide access to the property over the existing common driveway easement serving three lots that are part of the subdivision map of R. Foster. Subject to the following. Access to the conservation buffer shall be, I can amend that to say not within the first? Yes, would be more specific. 50 feet? Yeah. Of the westerly lot line, easterly lot line. Easterly lot line, um, submission of title certification, mortgage consent if applicable, approval of the amended covenant and supplement the legal documents by the town attorney and submission of a copy of the recorded amended covenant. Okay. Very good. Do you have a motion? Motion. Motion by Phil. Second. Second by Jackie. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Six yes. Okay. Moving on to number 12. Christopher Mead. Christopher Mead. High construction. Wetlands permit. We have a staff report and copy of the wetlands permit on there. there should be some maps. Um, I do have paper if anybody would like to look at it. Elevations. Color, but I can start yes. with the aerial. Yeah. Should be an aerial on there also. Do you have any? Probably in here. I'm just going. Yeah, there's a lot. Right, we got it. I got it. It's yeah. in the back. Okay. This one? At the very end of it. Yeah. And I have paper copies of the report if anybody would like it. Take one, two. <laughs> <laughs> We're going back. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little easier. That's the paper, huh? Particularly a large report. Yeah, it's long, it's just easy to flip through. All right, so I can go through this once everybody gets a copy. Um, give Wayne an opportunity to speak. Um, once I just go through everything. Okay? Okay. All right. In terms of the description, uh, the construction permit, wetland, slash wetlands permit is for Proposed construction of a 3,155 square foot agricultural storage barn on a 12.219 acre agricultural reserve parcel located within the R80 zoning district ag agricultural overlay district, New York State archaeological sensitive area in close proximity to town regulated wetlands located off Meacock's Bay Lane, west of Meacock's Road in the hamlet of Watermill. Uh, the developments indicated, covering the mic. Oh, mic that, yeah. Sorry, Charles. Mm -hmm. The development is indicated on the map, the map of part of the agricultural reserve area, subdivision map of Wheaton Estates on Meacock's Bay, prepared by Squires and Holden, dated July 1st, 2015, last revised May 22nd, 2018, planting plan entitled 82 Wheaton Way, prepared by ENEA, Garden Design, dated February 12th, 2018, as well as an un undated elevations and floor plans received on March 7th, 2018. The secret of this application was determined to be a type 2 action. Therefore, no further environmental review is required. Um, public comment, the Planning Board held a public hearing on May 24th, 2018, and provided a 10-day written comment period. No comments were received during the public hearing. Several written comments were received from abutting property owners, which are summarized as supporting the application as proposed, a set of others found the proposed barn to be in the least impactful location in regard to their own properties. Um, referrals, um, town engineer, uh, the found that the plan does not include test hole information, including groundwater elevation uh, with existing and proposed contours for drainage purposes. Uh, the proposed building includes, uh, <coughs> includes for two eight foot diameter by eight foot deep dry wells. These are required to have a minimum of two feet of vertical separation between the bottom of the leaching and groundwater. Uh, based on soil boring data, data in this area from prior developments on 82 Wheaton Way, groundwater is or at around the elevation of 1.9. The pro proposed barn is in an area at or around elevation 10. 
when the proposed dry wells are set with traffic bearing slab and casting, this will have the bottom of the structure at or around elevation 1.0 below ground uh, below, below ground water. This will not mm -hmm. be acceptable. Uh, the proposed plan does not include a cross section of, of the proposed gravel dri driveway and or detail of the apron that will be required at the drive access to Bay Lane. <coughs> and then just you know standard to please arrange for a pre-construction meeting and the engineering office did not recommend engineering approval. Uh, the Bridgehampton Fire District, um, the Board of Fire Commissioners has received the plans and information you sent regarding the above address. It is unclear at this time exactly what the planned buildings will be used for. Uh, the Bridgehampton Board of Commissioner, Commissioners requests more detailed information of what will be done at the above site. <coughs> they just requested more information and then they would offer, offer more of a response. Um, the Department of Fire Prevention um, offered, uh, stated that driveway should be in compliance compliance with IFC and TC 330-62 requirements and the street address shall be determined and shown. Um, I'm going to go through the comments of the Agricultural Advisory Committee. Um, they just have a standard form so it's kind of easy, lays it all out for us. Um, the first question is, is the proposed use or action on the Agricultural Reserve Agriculture of Nature? Their answer was not able to determine, not yet approve an operation. Two, our proposed building location on the Ag Reserve conducive to efficient and productive operation of a farm. No, both the building and driveway are located on prime ag soils and driveway, and the driveway defies the farm field. Three, does the use of the agricultural reserve warrant the need, size, and location of the proposed structures? As per their farming consultant, the 2,000 square foot building would satisfy, would satisfy their needs. It is highly unusual for a farm building to have a glass entry door, leading us to further question the ag use. Four, are there any topographic in or unique features on the property that should be taken into consideration? That have effect on the far farming <coughs> property. Uh, it says the proposed driveway is bisecting the ag reserve, and both the driveway and barn are located on prime ag soils. Um, other comments: uh, they say that they would recommend the 2,000 square foot building, <coughs> excuse me, be relocated to the northeast corner behind lot 29, with the easiest access to Bay Lane to preserve as much farmland as possible. Also states that there should be no permanent road access across the Ag Reserve through prime soils. Um, we are concerned this could become a grand entrance to the residence which should be accessed through its legal access on Wheaton Way. Um, their decision, we, they were opposed to the applicant's proposed plan and presented that alternate plan which was laid out in number five. Um, the Conservation Board stated the following, the applicant is seeking to construct a 3,155 square foot Ag Barn, uh, gravel driveway, parking area, and stone <laughs> In accordance with the survey prepared by Robert Smith, um, two as depicted on the above reference survey, the applicant is proposing to establish a naturally vegetated wetlands non-disturbance non-fertilization buffer. The conservation board recommends that the buffer plan be reconfigured to at minimum include all areas between the existing fence and the wetlands. In the event that the final plan calls for the buffer to extend to the northeastern portion of the property, the existing eight foot high deer fence needs to be relocated to the landward boundary of the buffer both in the interest of preserving the natural wetland values and benefits as well as to provide for an essential unrestricted movement and dispersal corridor for white-tailed deer and other wildlife. Uh, number four, um, I guess on an older version of the, the site plan, you know, they did state that there was going to be a bathroom, but they didn't show the septic on the version that you guys see. The septic system is on there. Um, and so the survey also needs to be revised to depict the location of any other above and or below ground utilities, which is on your version. And the proposed parking area needs to be constructed util utilizing pervious material. Uh, the Watermill CAC provided the following comments. The Watermill CAC discussed this application at our last meeting on May 14th. Practices defer to the recommendations of the Ag Advisory Board on these types of proposals, but the following was noted by our members. <coughs> this is counter usual practice. The driveway runs through the entire Ag Reserve to gain access to the proposed barn that the location of the proposed structure and driveway appears to have been determined so as to be attached to the applicant's residence, which should not have access to the Ag Reserve. Um, site plans, um, standards, and zoning requirements, setbacks. The project meets all the required setbacks for the zoning district. Uh, use and location of the pro proposed ag agricultural barn. <clears throat> Staff recommends that the applicant relocate the proposed agricultural storage barn to the northeast corner of the agricultural reser reserve behind lot 29 as this provides the easiest access to Meadowcox Bay Lane and preserves the maximum amount of, amount of farmland. The relocation of the proposed barn will future 
will further pre uh, prevent the construction of any permanent road access through the Ag Reserve through prime soils as recommended by the Ag Advisory Committee. Uh, staff further recommends that the access of, of the relocated barn shall be via an unimproved farm road and that the parking loading area shall be located on the southwestern side of the relocated barn. Uh, per the applicant's submission on March 19, 2018, the applicant's farmland consultant stated that the storage barn will acquire 2,000 square feet to store farming equipment to be used on the parcel rather than the 3,155 square feet uh, requested in the original application in accordance with the Agricultural Advisory Committee staff recommends that the applicant reduce the size of the storage barn to 2,000 square feet. In order to ensure that the building is used for a bona fide agricultural use only, the Planning Board shall impose the following general conditions. Uh, no top soil shall be removed from the site. Top soil shall be retained and distributed around the exterior of the proposed buildings or otherwise on the site as necessary, provided that the removal of subsoil for example, loam, sand, and gravel for the installation of storm drains to control runoff from roofs and other impervious areas or for sanitary systems shall be allowed. No retail sales, no landscaping and horticultural services shall be operated from the project site. No signage shall be installed on site other than sign indicating street numbers. No living quarters shall be installed on site. All utilities serving the site shall be un installed underground from the existing utility located in the street right of way. No outdoor storage of equipment and any proposed lighting shall be subject to planning board review and approval. Um, in terms of natural features, the applicant's original site plan submission included a proposed naturally vegetated wetland non-disturbance non-fertilization buffer, uh, which was later omitted from a further revision to the plan as per the recommendations of the Conservation Board. Staff recommends the establishment of said buffer. The buffer area should be further revised to include all areas seaward of the existing uh, deer fence adjacent to the wetland in addition to the uh, structures located in the buffer area including the existing gear fence shall be relocated to the landward, landward area of the buffer. Uh, the applicant has submitted an application for a wetlands permit within this application as the proposed project lies within 200 feet of wetlands. Um, and and uh, in, in terms of encroachments upon review of the sub uh, submitted site plans as well as aerial photographs of the subject parcel, staff finds that there appears to be several encroachments made by neighboring parcels onto the agricultural reserve. Noted, noted encroachments include but are not limited to a split rail fence adjacent to lot 29 and lawn area adjacent to lot 28. Furthermore, it appears that the agricultural fence surrounding the, ag the agricultural reserve was located further to the southwest of lot 28 to accommodate the previously referenced lawn encroachment. This fence, is, uh, this fence location is contrary to what was approved by the planning board on their, in their June 22, 2017 conditional approval of said agricultural fence. Staff recommends that all encroachments to the Ag Reserve be rectified um, and that the agricultural <coughs> fence adjacent to Lot 28 be relocated to a conforming location to prevent, prevent further encroachments prior to the signature of the site plan. Parking, proposed uh, parking loading area is adequate for the proposed use. Um, I don't know if you guys want to add anything about landscaping or buffering. If it needs to be buffered from a neighboring property, there's no lighting pr uh, proposed. And then I do have color elevations of yeah, we have a color. Um, cedar finished barn. It's going to be a gray that's color. That's for 3,100 square foot barn. Correct. Can, uh, on the map, the flood, sure. can you talk a little bit about the flood zones? Mm -hmm. I imagine, you know, there it's a wetland area, so I'm not too sure exactly what each flood zone means, per se. I'm not an expert, but I know it is shown on here that this is AE elevation 12 or AE flood zone AE 11. and then flood yeah. zone X. Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> Where is slot 29? Lot 29. 29. Is this one right here? I think it might be easier to get this map posted. Yeah, absolutely. Make comments. Sure. Yeah. Can you put it on a? Maybe it's so far away. So we have that map in here because I'm not sure I'm seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, so we far do, away from the pickles. Yeah. That's why I put it up there. Bring it. Bring it further over so that they can. I don't can know. See. That's going to hold. I can hold it. You got some thumbtacks, Ben? Thumbtacks. Yeah, the problem is that. I'll bring you a copy. Thank you. Right here. So. You do have the floor plan. <coughs> we do. That 
That's impossible to see for the people at the end. No, that's really not. Well, I'm just straining. Spatially trying to figure out where all these pieces are. Yeah, I was trying to figure it out I on think the Lauren's computer. Gonna get another copy of the. Yeah. Uh, Here, give it. I have one of my copies. It doesn't have Wayne's sketches on it, but maybe a copy of what I have. This part was on the map, was on the computer, but not all the rest. Yeah, okay. yeah. Sometimes they, um, so this is the barn. Yeah, is this buildable really lot? Is that this is the reserve? This is the reserve. This is, the reserve. This is all reserve. And this is 2829. These are the encroachments that were referenced. Right. Yep. <clears throat> the wetlands are just not there. Here. This is lot 29. No, this is not the old. Yeah, but this is lot 29. And the floor, as they say, so, so um, that's the encroachment. Is it going to be loud enough for me to speak here? Uh, I have to speak. You should move in. So yeah. That will work. You're usually loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Wayne Bruin, O'Shea, Marcin Sigan Bruin, on behalf of uh, Mr. Mead and our clients, uh, the farmers, Ludlow Farms, he's our farm consultant. Um, just to get some facts uh, correctly, uh, the survey that's here was actually revised during the process. A couple things was noted by the staff, uh, some of the changes, particularly we changed the orientation of the building based on input from our neighbors. Um, but the first thing, um, you had us flag the wetlands, so you can see that on the survey, there are the wetlands. In this subdivision map, there was a drainage easement because of the gentle swale coming up from Meacox Bay in this location. So there's a drainage easement to the town, actually goes through one of the minor subdivision lots, and then across this property over portions of the Ag Reserve. If you recall, the Sweeten Estates actually had a larger Ag Reserve extended on this side, and the Planning Board actually approved a lot line transfer, transferring this to the Halsey Farm, because physically it was separated by this swale in the wetlands. Um, so what was left was this Ag Reserve. Our client, um, owns this lot, purchased this lot, is in the middle of um, reconstructing that house. They also own this. So is that this, lot 11? That is lot 10. 10. On the subdivision map. Okay. The purpose of the barn is for agricultural accessory. Um, clearly, the sole access to the Ag Reserve is off of Bay Lane. The so access for lot 10 is off of flag lot with a common driveway to Wheaton Way. The barn, as we indicated at the hearing in several meetings, was located in this area based on about two years of consultation, not only with our farm consultant as to what can and where and how this is going to be farmed, and in particular studying the soils, um, but also in consultation with practically every neighbor surrounding this. Um, we became very intimately friendly with all the neighbors, particularly after all the cedar trees, the successional growth was removed. <laughs> they all want to know exactly what was happening. Uh, and when we indicated that we wanted to put a barn, of course, when they came to me, I told them the first place that the town's general policy is, is to minimize the disturbance of ag soils. Um, first of all, the ag soils are primarily to the west, clearly don't include the wetlands. I don't know where the exact delineation, but most of the prime soils are in that location. The farm road that is there runs along that edge. There is farming. This line you see here, the dotted line that I colored green, is the edge of clearing right now. So everything on this side of that is remains sort of in its natural state. Everything else has been cleared and has been traditionally farmed. Okay. We did come to the board 
first thing is to do any crop. The farm consultant said you need a, you need a deer fence. Came to you, got an approval of the deer fence. The location of the deer fence as installed, as approved, other than this location, which we'll talk about, was as per the board. So the intent of our client is to farm everything inside that deer fence. So with respect to wetlands and the like, you got a, con a couple conflicting things. One is, on one hand, you have uh, the wetland people telling you to get rid of ag soils stop farming everything and put the traditional 100-foot buffer, um, which makes no sense because the exception to the wetland law is agriculture. So we want to keep farming as much as we can farm. So that's one thing we'll talk about on the buffer and what we can or can't do because clearly within the fence portion, we have no problem. There's no intent to farm that. We can put that as a covenant and a buffer. And it's perhaps some area over here because you know, the lines that are shown, the red line is the two, uh, is the 125 foot structural setback line. So we couldn't place a structure with anywhere in that area. So to put a farm building up here, um, we'd, we'd start running the foul of those things and otherwise. Is that a wetlands line, the red line? The red line is the 125 foot structural setback line. From a wetland. From the wetlands. And so, but doesn't it hit the corner of that barn? We're, we're just outside it. We're 125 plus. Uh, we did that, again, to, to, to minimize encroachment into farmland and <clears throat> put it as close as we could get this direction and the closest we can get is 125 feet. So that's why that is set back at that location. So that's some of the premise as to that. However, like I mentioned, we talk to all our neighbors. And as you've experienced throughout every time now, farming, everybody loves the look of it, but nobody wants it in their backyard. Every one of these neighbors will vehemently oppose. They opposed it. They wrote you letters. They told you they don't want it. We located it here. It's next to our house. We had it in a different orientation. We had it closer to this direction until this gentleman screamed and yelled at us and we shifted it this direction. We reoriented it so he has less of a view or impact from the barn. That's what caused the reorientation. And it actually is better and it's it's closer to our lot. Design and architecture, actually, the, the, the siding and materials are all compatible to the house that's being built there. Okay, so the barn itself, however, so the first recommendation you have, our application, I admit it's, I use the number that Squires and Holden put on their survey, which is down here for drainage calculations, and he puts the 3,155 square feet. If you look at our floor plans, however, that have been in with the application from day one, there's a number and it's 3,750. Well, the thing that Squires and Holden, we're not sure, there's two areas that are open, porches, and on, on each side where the entryways are. And that's about 705 square feet, and, and if you do the math, that comes out to 300, 3,055 or 31, somewhere in that vicinity, because we're not sure of the architect's numbers. But So the floor plans are what's been before you, and, and we want to get those numbers straight. The second thing is, is we had the consultant give you a memo early on, pretty cryptic, had a list. You want to know what was going to take place in the barn. And he basically says uh, tractors, mower, so on, so on. It, and in the bottom it says the above will need close to 2,000 square feet. We get this recommendation for the first time. Didn't hear a peep from you about the size of this or otherwise at the hearing. And, and, and I heard about it yesterday. Matt was great to send us the report. And I went back to my client and said, whoa, what is this? went back to the farmland consultant and he gave us a, a new letter to clarify everything. One of the things when he was saying 2,000 square feet, if you look at the floor plans, there's sort of an open area. That's about 2,000 square feet. 
he doesn't speak to the office, the closed cl uh, storage area and the, and the shop area and so on. This report takes into account all those areas and tells you what each space is going to be used for and how and what. So <coughs> in my mind, it justifies that. Um, and certainly, if you've been in any of these barns, this is 3,000 or so square feet. You've, you've been reviewing and proving barns much bigger, 10,000 square feet, metal barns. That's not what's proposed here. And, and I know you've looked at that. So I think this helps to justify the space that's needed here. Um, if you look at the architecture of the building, you know, it has garage doors on all, both sides, but yet when you look at it, you don't really see that. It's the siding material, but there's like three garage doors here and two garage doors on that side. And you can't just pile things in and block the access. And there's no, not even a mention of what's the space needed for both setup in the spring for planting and seeding, and then what's the setup you need for harvesting and putting product and storage of that or otherwise. So that's all part of what parcel of the barn. So I think I would ask you to look at that and otherwise I see no justification other than a recommendation that it should be smaller. I, I, I don't get that. But So I think that justifies it as far as that is concerned. The second question that comes I, out... I just, sure. Somebody mentioned something about a glass door. The, the, the original plans had a glass door. We immediately revised that. Oh. We caught that even before. The problem was is that we make a submission, it quickly gets referred. A lot of the comments you got in here were, were addressed or otherwise uh, changed when we modified, submitted the modified plans way before the public hearing. So there is no glass door. They're all barn doors. You can look at the revised plan. That's not in there. So that glass door is, was never... You, you had an architect trying to be compatible over here, mm -hmm. and the, the point is, is well, well, when Mr. Ludlow gets involved, we, we're like, and he's, he questioned that too, right from the get-go. Wait a minute, wait, I'm not going to work with a glass door. <laughs> so that, that, that was immediately um, taken out. And as Matt said, you know, the first plan didn't show we had a bathroom in the floor plan. Where's the septic? And we immediately had the, the surveyor you know, show that on the plan. That was part of the revision, and there's been applications made to the health department for that as well. Does the outside the um, what's the, the 200 foot? It's outside now. The 175 foot so setback over wetlands. So um, that, in, in fact, maybe Matt, you could pick up on that. That we should have that setback shown on there for you. So, so, so that's so clear. Bottom line, you're hoping to get how many square feet for the barn? It's what's shown on those floor plans right now. So the, the total floor, the, the footprint, including the porches, the roof area, right. is 3,750 according to the architect. There's 705 square feet for the two porches on the corners. So interiors. It's 3, roughly 3,000 of a footprint. However, there is a, a um, loft in there, and that's mentioned. And that wasn't really addressed anywhere, but that's been in the plans all along. But it's addressed by Mr. Ludlow in his. So when you add all that, he didn't give us a total. Uh, Three thousand five hundred twelve. Three thousand five hundred twelve. I added it. At twenty. Total interior space. Yeah. Three thousand five twelve. Or thirty five hundred. And what is the what is the uh, the farm? Is it? Uh, Trees or so right now it's all in what is it rye or wheat wheat rye rye um, Harry has plans to do alternate things but it required a couple years of setup with the soils because nothing was happening there it was all cedar trees and then all that was removed and bulldoze you know you get the trees out he's, he's needed a, two years basically that was only done two years ago. So he's needed that, and right now it's all rye. But he has plans to do, uh, there's plans to put in fruit trees. They're studying where, you know, the, the thought was is trying to utilize space, um, perhaps along this side if they can put fruit trees. The Halseys have fruit trees. They, they seem to survive, but the question is, 
as you get to this easterly side of the property, the wetland and the wet soils become an issue. So they're still studying that, but the plan was to put fruit trees along this portion, berries and other um, row crops as well th throughout. So um, what, is the, what do you have planned for the eastern side of the road? To continue farming or let that go to the social road? Continue farming for now. Until they fully determine it, at, at some point, they were, like I said, the, right now their plan is to put fruit trees along this side. You know, whether it's uh, cherries or uh, apples, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but that's, that's their current plan, is primarily on that side. So the second question that the Ag Advisory has is, put the barn up here. And I can tell you right now, if you're prepared, I mean, the only way it, it, it'll, it, our client isn't going to do it. We, we don't want to litigate with any of these neighbors. We spent two years doing this. This is the least impactful. We talk to every neighbor. You have several letters. It's mentioned in the staff report. I don't know if you gave the board copies, but there's probably eight letters in the file from all these neighbors saying, we want it here. They've been calling my office left and right. What's going on? I keep telling them, we're not proposing to change it. It's coming from the Ag Advisory Committee. The Planning Board hasn't decided it yet. Okay, I understand. Uh, we're not changing it. I just, and I, I hear what, what you're saying, but does that mean that this board that is trying to work with Ag Reserves and not disturb Ag Soils and recommendation of the Ag Advisory, that that should not take precedence. What should take precedence is the complaints of the neighbors. I, I think it, you have to take that into consideration. They have to balance it, right? To balance it, absolutely, absolutely. I would say that this road is, as I think, what Dennis, you're sort of asking is, what, you know, on one hand, you also have Marty Shea telling us, don't farm this area anymore. Well, it looks like it's underwater. You're in two flood zones. Well, flood zones are based on and elevations. Wetlands. They're based on elevations, so I can explain what that meant. You also, the F L L A E oh, elevation 10 means you your first floor area has to be at 12 feet above mean sea level. And then when you go, so for example, at this point, the elevation there is 10. It's 10 feet above mean sea level there. So when you get to building the barn, you're, you're basically a foot or so above the grade. So you meet the flood zone requirements, but clearly as you start going this direction, you're, you're not. You know, you're, you're down here at elevation four. That's four feet above mean sea level, and the elevate, you know, if you were to build something, if you, you know, wasn't wetlands, you'd need a 12 foot um, or 14 foot first floor elevation. That's why these houses down here all are up. So is there flooding? below that because do you remember you had an this application on ocean road occasionally on the storms there'll that, be floods you had an application on ocean road where you had to put in extensive drainage because of flooding consistent no, flooding it's not that kind of flooding the flooding here is because of the wetlands and the elevation in Meacox Bay which is limited you know mm -hmm. Meacox is not tidal so but if you don't drain Meacox the water comes up there could be storms where there's issues but this drainage easement is because the water is flowing from the, no the north, and you remember the Summerfield subdivision right across the street, and you have a big drainage area there on the corner. Some of that drainage you've taken care of through development. However, this drainage easement was originally to allow the natural flow of water to go down into that's, the wetlands. That's the swale. Yeah. Yeah. So what is being planted there now? Right now, this yeah, is all in, on rye. Oh, in, the, in that bottom part? Same thing. Rye? Yeah. Okay. Right now, that's all. A, the, okay. There's no other row crops. Well, if it's flooded, I guess you could do rice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, one way to obviate the concerns of the Ag Advisory Committee is to look at that eastern portion. And if that, I don't know how crucial it is to your client to maintain that in agricultural use. But if that were left to revert to some sort of buffer area as a conservation board is, is pressing for, then that 
that road then becomes a perimeter road. It no longer bisects the ag reserve. It becomes a perimeter road, and their concerns are, are addressed to a certain extent. But if that's a crucial area well, that... It, clearly, where the ag fence <laughs> is, you know, we have no issue there. I can talk to my clients. You know, what you're, I guess what I'm hearing is, is should we give up the potential to farm all this area in between the fence and the driveway? Well, I think that's that's coming a lot from the arc. Maybe not the northern, maybe not that northern sector, but I think what we're hearing from the conservation board is, and I know the area very well, it just, it is that swale, and there's phragmites and wetlands vegetation that migrates into that field. And every, you know, you're going to have trouble, especially with fruit trees in certain locations there anyway. Rotting the roots, yeah. So right. you're saying just take that piece out of the equation, that across well, the a whole wetland chunk, piece. Uh, the, the, the chunk that's really impacted by the wetlands. As I say, looking at the map close up, the area that's closer to um, 45 Popham Associates, this area seems to be out of that concern, although there is the drainage easement impacting that. I'm just saying it addresses the, the ag advisory. Mm. Their concern is that you're plowing this road through an ag reserve and if there's or bisecting no things that are being farmed, you know, right. but in reality, you know, other than us planting the rye right now, it hasn't uh, bisected anything, but it is so soil. So, I mean, my client, uh, being farmers, they want to maximize as much as they can to farm. So we haven't given up the, the, the case of giving up that land, at least from the agricultural perspective, from the farmer's perspective. He wants... And that's why they were looking at the fruit tree thing. I mean, maybe, um, I don't know what this distance is, but certainly perhaps this area becomes less important because that is lower and it's more of a swale area, but you know, the fence is already there. I mean, th that's the other recommendation was, oh, put a buffer in and then move the fence again. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. If I can clarify, it was more the recommendation that the buffer from conservation was from the existing fence here seaward down towards no but you, you you have a recommendation in here which i was a little confused yeah. it says relocate the fence this portion of the fence if, if this so extend it if the buffer words. goes here follows the limit the fence here and goes across just remove the, relocate this portion of the fence yeah. just so it's on so that's what the you're border doing. of that's the that's 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 just so you know yeah. Yeah. So so you take out that bottom the portion that there. floods right there yeah. Yeah. um I mean, if you're well, talking about the buffer, and I, I think that makes sense, I can see that. But I mean, it, I thought it was, you know, put in an, a, a, you know, a buffer, get rid of farmland, and then move the fence to the other side of the buffer. That's the way we read that. No, uh, he doesn't mean that. He okay. Didn't mean no, that. I don't think. So um, we're concerned more about the ecology. It's not a decision you have to make if you need two weeks to, to. Um, no, I might be able to answer this right now. Just yes. <laughs> so, what what does it flood with? Is it, uh, it, it fresh, wa it's, fresh water? Yeah. It's Meacox Bay. So it's bed. salt water. Well, it's, yeah, it's brackish. Yeah. It's brackish. So it's not going to it's fruit not going to get fruit trees. trees. No, no, it'll rot out the roots of the fruit trees. Also, it's picking up it's picking up runoff from these right. fields from here. Those yeah. So it's actually you're going to get water both ways. You get salt water from the bay, brackish water, you want to get fertilized water. Do you mind what? I mean, this is a small portion. Like I said, this area was, I don't, I mean, talking to Henry, very little that can be farmed over there. So, a client in, in, in consultation with Harry was like, this This is the lower area, it is wetter, and mm -hmm. so this certainly, you know, probably not going to be farmed. So, giving that up is, is not so much an issue. And uh, as long as they're, you know, the, 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 this area, they, if they do want to use, but, you know, if it's going to be fruit trees, that's easy to do because it isn't something you have to cultivate every, you know, every spring uh, kind of thing. That, that makes it easier, but... Um, fruit trees along the edge, along the road. Yeah. And then what about the area east of that? Because that's what they were planning, actually, both sides, is coming in and it was sort of like this. <coughs> This whole area was going to be fruit trees, and the rest of it was going to be various row crops, uh, berries, things of that sort. Is this I think what I'm hearing you say, though, is abandon the farming south of the road. 
so that the road then becomes a perimeter to road. To a certain extent. A perimeter road, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and we're willing to do that, yeah. but I mean, it, can we leave the fence where it is and just do the buffer yeah. up to the fence, but we'll run the fence directly across or we'll, we'll modify it a little up to this monument Absolutely. so it's that would just something yeah. direct? Yeah, we're not, look, we're not asking you to the fence. It really isn't driving. Keep the fence where it works for you, but it's more allowing that eastern portion, that lower portion, to go into successional growth. growth. Okay, so that, I think we're getting the go ahead on that, um, so we can modify that. Now, is there any more discussion? When you're just putting your hand on that one little section. Mm -hmm. right. I, what I think I'm hearing well, is fall across. Across, yeah, yes. uh, that's what I'm talking about, okay. right where the fence is. Yeah. But we put a buffer and move the fence and on this portion here. Actually, I, I think they tied into to John Halsey's deer fence that goes right down on the property oh. line already. But well, could do it nonetheless, we, which is easy for us then. So we're not removing a fence. We're just putting Adding. a new fence over that location. So, right. But we put the buffer over this entire right, well, you, you'll sketch that out for us yeah okay well, that's another. the talk, um, talk to us about the encroachments. encroachments. okay yeah. the encroachments when when of course no one knew about this um mr meads owned this for a long time uh and when we started doing certain well what happened is when they cleared the land all of a sudden you know this became evident because then we they started starting this process and oh we need a survey to go get the deer sure. fence the whole nine yards all of a sudden boom these encroachments a couple other places we had encroachments which we were able to resolve so the quickly. people were just using this as lawn they were m moving in exactly and, and claiming and this guy has a fence that's off the line everything this one is fairly easy this one we don't know what the status is the only thing i would have have to say that we we, we have no problem with this because frankly we don't see what their claim is i mean you got two things going on here we have private ownership and the whole issue is adverse possession mm -hmm. adverse possession can go to the private owner however the town has a easement interest in that um which i they can't claim adverse possession against or get rid of the ag easement so th that's easy but i don't know if they can or can't have a claim against us i don't frankly know how long the lawn has been there or otherwise but and I know this gentleman is an attorney so we certainly uh, appreciate the board telling us to have to yeah. deal with the issue the only question I have is is the suggestion from staff that it be done before you actually sign the site plan which means I don't know how long it will take us to do but that means everything stopped in the interim so yeah. if that could be changed to prior to a CEO I have no problem with that it gives us a little bit of time it allows my client to start and do everything and then we have to get that result so that's that's the question I have a question for Kathleen does the town become I mean we're looking at a lawn that's inconsistent with the ag, with the terms of the easement does the town become a party to enforcement absolutely absolutely yeah. we can send somebody out you would there. be yeah. yeah i mean i have no problem with that but i mean i i, I can't I, I haven't done enough research right now I, okay. I, I and i i i fully appreciate it. i see kathleen nodding her head clearly they can't claim adverse possession against the town's interest but it's not a fee interest that you own it's only the easement interest so in a sense there's a theory that yeah i, I could lose title to the property but their their title that they claim is still subject to the right. easement you know what i mean is so he he couldn't use this for structures or anything else in fact what he can only use it for is farming well, right so now he's not even using it he's in I violation know. so i think we can resolve it you know we've had discussions with him when we first became aware of this um but all i know is that we would need some time and if you know you approve this today two weeks from now or whatever then i have you know what is it 45 days to get the map signed i got 45 days to re resolve it. It, it it just isn't going to be enough yeah. time so all i'm saying is we we need time we are going to clear it up well what about some help from the town you know, in terms of well I, I, again until yeah, i actually yeah. get to that i mean you are giving us help you're directing it be done and if i came back and then told the town attorney's office this guy isn't being cooperative you know certainly the town could help us you know 
we'd actually be a defendant. <laughs> You'd probably name us and that party as, as, as a violation. So and we don't want to be in that position either. So we want to clear it up. I just need time, but allow my client totally over here to start a process that he can, but he can't finalize it until it's resolved. That's all. Okay. So that's, that's that issue. Um, that's reasonable. Yep. The other thing is you, you, you have uh, the staff is proposing some conditions that typically go with the farmland and, <laughs> and that was on your staff report and it's in the resolution page five into six it was A to H and the first one is about topsoil we have no problem whatsoever but then you say no retail sales the only exception I would hope would be that just like any other farm they could get a farm stamp permit if that's applicable they, they meet all the requirements that they would be able to do that that's I don't think you could prohibit the farmer from yeah. trying to sell his goods so the access road then for that well I, I, I'm just thinking as the lawyer right now yeah and haven't discussed this but I'm saying is they would have the ability not unlike what the Halsey farm does right now you want to sell the, you can go and buy apples at, on the apple farm down there and pick your own apples we planted apple trees. Can I not sell the guy a bushel of apples when he Absolutely. comes to pick them? Absolutely. So I, I, I think we'll modify that, yeah. that language. So to that extent, I, I, I just want to leave that. Uh, I just want to clarify the next one. See, no landscaping. You're talking about the type of businesses where I'm a landscaper. I'm using them. This is a base of operation kind of thing. That yeah. you're not saying I can't use this for horticulture or. Or landscape material kind of thing okay so I don't have a problem with that the no signage no living quarters is fine all the utilities are fine now no outdoor storage of equipment I've never been to a farm where the farmer doesn't have his tractor parked outside or whatnot I don't know how I would it's gonna be in the barn you're gonna be in the barn it's normally square feet. but yeah sometimes they're not yeah but a lot of I mean the whole point of Establishing size for a barn is for Have you ever equipment. been to a farm and you see all their equipment all over the place, particularly during harvest yeah, time? I, 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 I just. I think in the past we've like, put a limit, like 50 feet from the property line or something like that. Some of these properties are tighter, and that's where he's getting it from. So, you know, prohibiting 50 feet within a property So you're line. saying, yeah, I, don't, I have no problem. But yeah, I don't think. something to that effect. But if, if the guy stops his tractor here because everything's full of. You know who knows that the boxes of apples if they harvest them or whatever it is in the barn I don't think you, you can say the guy can't have his tractor overnight um, that I think is it just to circle back to 3e are you basically um, eliminating your ability to secure agricultural housing um, well, thanks for asking, but I guess you could um, say no living quarters without permission of the planning board. Okay. Because, yeah, I, yeah, I, our client has no intent, but you just, thanks, I should have thought of that. <laughs> no, but, yeah. Trying to put out fires before the surface. So, Wayne, you're going you're gonna to bring us a, um, Revised. a sketch? Of, uh, and then we can act on this uh, I, I think that would be cleaner for everybody so that yes. you, we'll, we'll put the buffer on there we'll put the relocation of the fence we'll even put a note on on this encroachments to be removed things like that so that you know Matt can then look at it and I'll clean up the numbers on the floor area whatever you know the drainage calculations which frankly uh, I don't think he's basing it on the roof area which he should be but um, so we need an extension we do need an extension no, are we at action deadline Matt? We're great so we'll uh, at the request of the applicant do we have a motion for a 14-day extension motion, motion. Two weeks. motion by uh, Blaney second by Up Phil to the 26 whatever is next okay. I impose abstentions that's till July 26 we'll get this on uh, uh, thanks for working with us Blaney. no problem thank you that's it for me thank you my birthday gift. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that it for you, Matt? That's it for me. All right, clear. Come on down. Let Matt start.
little vacation. Yes. <laughs> Clean up his mess. Celebrate his birthday. All right. Here, are you going in order? Yes. Okay. Uh, Watermill. Watermill Village. townhouses. Yeah. Doing secret. Um, I think you're all familiar with it, right? Yeah. I don't want to pull out the plans unnecessarily. Yeah, we, you know. uh, we're just commencing secret. So it's that type you, one. Type one. Two entities are the health department and DOT. Which yeah. number are we on? One. Thank you. I didn't hear that. Okay. Do we have motion? Motion. Motion by Phil. Second. Second by Blaney. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Six yes, one absent. We've got Roscoe, item two. Yeah, this is the one that the, the ZDA, uh, you saw it. It's a, put an additional uh, warehousing building on the property that is on Hunter 39, and uh, it's like the out parcel to the uh, residential Southampton Meadows. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's on Seasons Lane, um, and the, Z, the ZBA granted them approval, but they'll need uh, both a pre-submission and a site plan for you. So they have sufficient information to process uh, and schedule the uh, pre-submission conference, mm -hmm. which would be for August 9th. Good. Do we have motion? Motion. Motion by Phil. Second. Second by Jackie. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Six yes, one absent. We've got John Maloney, item eight. Yes. Uh, you're here for that? Great. And then in your packet is a transfer uh, resolution. <coughs> this Number is a eight. transfer with the town land, which contains the oh, uh, yeah. Lizon catch up. Catch up, that's right. Uh, Thousand change per foot transfer. Um, very straightforward. Uh, it's in the village business, so no variances or anything necessary. There's no restrictions. Um, we've got fire prevention that had no requirements. And um, Vinny Gordiello, on behalf of the town engineer, had a couple items regarding the title, um, to indicate the easements, uh, to put these mapping notes on it, and to uh, talk about the d demolishing of the one-frame cottage that's in the rear. And uh, no other comments were received. Um, the findings in this case, it was a public hearing, no comments. It describes the application, the transfer. It's 4,733 square feet. It's kind of making the lots more, you know, Standard in terms of size. Um, and number uh, three is that they exist presently. Um, there's no minimum requirements for the zoning district and it meets the criteria. Um, did you have any questions, Bailey, or should I just go through the condition? Okay. And then, so the resolved would be to waive the requirements, and I'll go through the conditions unless you have some questions regarding the application. Great. So the first is A through F are some napping notes. Um, the one-story cottage <coughs> will have to be removed prior to signature. Um, they could leave it if they wanted to. It's just been the whole time they've been <coughs> showing it. You could have the cottage and the buildings on there, but since they've said it, it should just maybe be clean that way. Um, the uh, the relocated so the Lizon Hat Hat Shop has been relocated to the current location on the property. So oh, uh, that just needs to be um, shown correctly. The easement needs to be indicated in the revision dates, health department approval, submission of the access easement. Um, this the rest is standard. The draft deeds and the executions um, and the filing with the uh, county and all. The with 108 days. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Uh, any comments for the applicant? Very good. We have a motion. Motion. Motion by Zuccarelli. Second. Second by Blaney. All in fa uh, second by Phil. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Six yes. One absent. 
Thank you. So, uh, how about Stavropoulos? Yes. Uh, Item nine. Yes. Joe is from the Rainer Group is here. Um, so Stavropoulos, I'll get you a plan so you see. had done a pre-submission on this application um, back in 2013. This is for the Candy Kitchen oh, yes, yes. and oh. the um, neighboring offices. Or, <coughs> I'm sorry, retail shop. Yeah, okay. And uh, are these all one packet, all these plants? Yeah, the first page, page is probably the best one, right? This would uh, be the final plan? Yeah. Um, so, Joe's here to give a letter, but essentially since 2013 he's been working to conform to the health department and it's kind of opened up a can of worms where the health, you know, the sanitary system needs to be upgraded. Uh, um, the utilities are affected with that. Then the town <coughs> gets involved and the town parking lot is on their property and their utilities are on the town property and so <laughs> so it's it's opened up a can of worms but I think they are on their way to to resolving so they're asking for two things um, one would be to reflect there's been a little change to the, the map to uh, to reapprove reauthorize the pre-app reports um, and then to um, to amend it for the map change, but also to kind of recognize that this is a type two property, easements will be needed for the utilities over the town property, and likewise, they're willing to give easements so the town could use it for the parking lot. So it's a, you know, it's an even exchange. But if you had like an inscription in your report, it would help with the town board's actions on the application. So Do you have a copy of the pre-app report? Uh, the original one is attached in the computer. So I did attach that. I put in, uh, it's only a three page report because it was pretty simple because being village business, there would be no variances or anything like that with the application. We thought it was pretty straightforward application actually, but not. Um, Joe, Joe is here. He might be able to explain it a little bit more if you have more questions sure. for it. But if you're supportive to the reauthorization, I would write some language up that would just be, you know, <coughs> reflect to the easements. So. I'm trying to find it, Claire. It should be after Joe's report. Got it. Page. Yeah, Got Joe's it. a letter. Fifty-four. Yeah. <clears throat> Joe Lombardi from the Rainer Group. On behalf of the clients. Um, we actually made simultaneous submissions to the planning board and to the health department in November of 2013. Mm -hmm. um, the planning board acted in February of 2014. We, we didn't get a health department approval until February of 2018. You're kidding. Uh, we, we had to go. Five years? It was very arduous. Um, we went to the board of review. We had to come back to the planning board, or, or we got to go to planning to get a uh, administrative review to pivot an existing walk-in cooler that's behind the candy kitchen, so that we could fit the sanitary system back there. And then the health department realized that the board of review made a mistake in their findings, so we had to go back to the board of review. <laughs> and there were there were covenants and that took a while and people retired and it, it just been <laughs> a very long time coming but basically what what happened is when candy kitchen well when the atrium was built next to the candy kitchen it was all on one parcel and same thing with bobby vans <coughs> and they just put utilities in through the back of the property um but now that no they easements. want to subdivide it, no, there was never an easement. There was never an e a need for easements. Now that they want to try to have that subdivision, they have to relocate uh, the utilities. Right. And uh, um, <coughs> the uh, electric company and water authority are looking for an easement in the right of way from the town so that we can put utilities in that right of way. And while we were going through this, we realized that the town also sort of encroached into the corner of 
the Candy Kitchen property with their traveled access that goes back to the parking the lot. Parking lot. Yeah. So there'll be an easement from the uh, the estate of Bridges Stavropoulos to the town so that that doesn't have to be removed. And the town is going to allow us to, uh, if they approve the, if the town board approves the uh, easement, they'll allow us to put utilities um, in the right of way. <coughs> we've gone to the town engineer, we've gone to the superintendent of highways, we've got a road opening permit. Okay. Um, we're basically ready to go in the fall. Uh, other than that, one not good thing, I think, is right now there's an overhead line that goes to a pole that's right by where that uh, walking cooler was, and it just serves that walking cooler. While we're doing this, we're rewiring things. It's underground. And it's going to be underground, so yeah. we'll get rid of the pole and the overhead line. And the parking behind uh, there is on someone else, is on whose lot? There, there are actually spaces behind the candy kitchen, kitchen right? and spaces behind the atrium building. Right. Um, and th this, this plan will not affect okay. any of that parking. Good. All right, well, <coughs> it's a tricky yeah. site. So, mm -hmm. Cl Claire, you're recommending reauthorization? Yeah, reauthorization, and I'll put some language in there to support the, uh, the utilities easements. Um, and I'll mention the over the overhead line being going underground. That would be great. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Is the motion by Zuccarelli? Second. Second by Phil. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Six yes. Hmm. Then my next one, uh, B&B Ventures uh, 4, is just a one-day extension for the action deadline to the next meeting, July 26. Okay, very good. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by, who is that? Second. Second. Uh, motion by and uh, <laughs> Second by Phil. All in favor, aye. Opposed, abstentions. Mm -hmm. um, and Success. then my next one is uh, Samuels, Samuels and Samuels, item 13. So, um, the applicant had requested a few weeks ago to um, extend the um, deadline for submission of plans on this application, which has been around and approved since March of 2016. And um, at the time, we learned that they were possibly storing fireworks in some of the trailers on the property. And um, since then, the applicant has um, you did not consider the extension of the time to ask them to come back with uh, more more detailed information what's going to happen on the property. So uh, Tim, Tim McCauley prepared a letter which I have attached uh, with the survey, the latest survey on the property. Um, and the original approval was for like office trailers or cassone trailers used for construction. <coughs> um, now they were proposing to use it for manufactured homes that would be like a temporary home as construction is going on. Um, so that is the proposal um, at this time. The As far as the issue of the uh, fireworks, um, I still would say that this is an outdoor storage use in any case, like there's no occupancy of the buildings. That makes it a different entity uh, as far as I'm concerned, so I would rec highly recommend that we do more referrals if there's going to be any buildings with people occupying the space inside. That was never part of any approval that you considered or I considered on the, you know, during this review. So the applicant's representative's here. He can talk to about his letter, and you can consider his request. Members of the board, Timothy S. McCulley, 41 Meeting House, no, Southampton. It's, it's off. Um, when we were here, I think it was the end of May, we were looking for an extension of the prior approval. The prior approval was for marine contractor and storage. What we're proposing now on there, there was Cassone trailers that were going to be in there, but because of the delay, they've moved on to and built, bought some property in Riverhead. But now we have two prospective tenants. One is um, storage of the manufactured homes. What they do is uh, if there's a fire in a home, 
and people need a place to live, they take these trailers and put them on the property. I've seen them before uh, in my neighborhood. Um, and they're there temporary while the house is being uh, rehabilitated. So they store, they have a, quite a number of trailers, but at any one time there's like 10 or 12 trailers. They're probably going to occupy maybe half of the space there. And the other tenant um, <coughs> does playground equipment uh, that they put together and then it's shipped and uh, most of their clients are in New York City, I understand. Those are the two uses that we have now. And I know that the fireworks issue came up the last time and you didn't want to extend the uh, approval because of the fireworks. There's no <coughs> fireworks on the property right now. There's a trailer there for the storage of them and that was contemplated. Two things are happening now. As I read the statute, all the permits are in place for that storage for, of the fireworks. Um, but as I understand it now, in order for that to stay there, if there's any office complex or anything associated with either one of the proposed uses, I don't think there's enough separation, so that would have to go. Um, but other than, other than the fireworks issue, which we're going to work out, um, I want a sense of the board. Is that the reason that we didn't get the extension the last time? I think it was. Claire? But I don't know how you handle this. I'm sorry. I thought you said there, excuse me, I'm sorry. Hmm? I thought you said there was no fireworks on the property. There is no fireworks on the property. Okay. So what, what did you say the, the last sentence? What said? I'm saying is the trailer is there and it was contemplated renting to, to him in this Con container that's a, a boot. <coughs> we had to have state and federal permits for it, but there's not, no fireworks are there, and we're not intending any to be there unless we have the full approval of the board. But I think the last time that was the concern that you raised, right? It was the fireworks? Yes, or uh, and or any storage of anything in any building because there was no buildings with this. <coughs> okay. Are you proposing building? There may be an office there, and that's, you know, we're going to, I'm going to rework the, the, the site plan, but other than, I'm looking for, a, you know, something uh, from the board that. Well, you mentioned leave, the residential huh? trailers. You mentioned the residential trailers. Well, they're, yeah, they're manufactured trailers, yes. But and that's permitted. Are used residentially? No, 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 nobody lives in them there. On the site, huh? No, nobody lives in them there. They're just. They're only there for storage. When the call comes, they take them and they take them to wherever premises. But you're saying one of them would be used as an office? One of them may be used as an office. Now, is that, are those structures clear? Yeah. Yeah, they're They got wheels? And yeah. They're still structures. Yeah. They're yeah. Mobile structures, but they're structures. Yeah, so we'd want to know a location of that, um, maybe a little parking because somebody would be coming to the property and right. a car. Nobody comes to the, except the people that pick up the thing. But I'm going to give you all of that, and I understand you need all of that for a formal uh, go around, but um, The office I think is probably going to have a bathroom, so there's going to be septic, there's going to be water. Service. Well, we're going to address all of that. Good. Those are site plan things. I think that's what Claire So is. we're going to redo <coughs> the site plan, but I just wanted to let you know that that's where we're going now because Casone disappeared. Okay. All right. Why don't we get all this together and then submit it to Claire? Okay. Okay. Right. So no right. action. No action. No action on it. Okay, great. Great. Thank you. And then number 15, Bridgehampton Commons. That's uh, they've requested a two-week extension. Okay. Uh, the action deadline for secret. Very good. Do we have a motion? To what? July. To July 26th. Motion. Motion by Bill. Second by Blaney. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Extensions. And uh, my last item, Seg Harbor Impound Yard is actually off the agenda. Off the agenda. But I had Mr. Phil sign a studio at East Quag Corwin. Site so plan. add on, add on. Add on item. What's it called? Studio? Uh, Tim. Studio. Yes. Yeah, yeah. East Quag Tim Corwin. Studio at East Quag Tim Corwin. Right. Signed. Signed. Sealed and delivered. Correct. Thank you so much. Right, Claire. Claire. Why is
why was the impound yard off the agenda? Oh, because I when somebody says they're going to submit me plans on Monday and they don't submit them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I take it off. Either. So it's it's, yeah. it's 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 for technical reasons. It's technical. That's, that's not you. the way to yeah. make friends with Claire. I try to help. I try to help. But. We know. Is that it? One more for me. Come one on, more. Uh, uh, one item more seven. Uh, what I'll do is I have uh, hard copies of the reso actually. Okay. Because, yeah, Thank you. Three. Everybody knows Kevin right? You, you have do. them for everybody. One for everybody coming it's down. Coming down. Coming down. Everybody remembers the chemical. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Up on North Sea. Yes, Neepon. well, oh, all those private right away. Those ponds, and yeah, I pass um, there all the time yeah. on my way home from the, the village. Uh, we'll have a preliminary <coughs> here. We had a preliminary hearing in May, did a free application for that. Um, we had some lengthy discussions about some of the issues. And just so you know, when this preliminary application was submitted, I actually gave it to John before I did anything, before he left, uh, so we could do a review. Um, they did make actually changes to the maps and came with new maps, and I subsequently gave them to Christine, and her, her comments are incorporated in here. Um, so the uh, application is for subdivision. We have a standard with 11 lots, and the PRD uh, with 11 lots, 7.8 acres of open space, representing 35% of the area of the lot. Um, and I believe 50% of the prime agricultural soils, um, which I should add in there. Um, and with three workforce housing units to be provided off-site. Uh, you might recall um, this pro project gets a density incentive with 11 lots, a yield of two extra lots for affordable. Um, rather than uh, building within the subdivision, the applicant within North Sea School District, not <coughs> has a site that has a pre-existing CO for single-family residents and two apartments, um, and has agreed that we would get the three units, actually, instead of the two, um, which was proposed and supported by Kyle, who is on the record here. Um, uh, we have a yield of 11. The preferred plan is the PRD plan. Um, the last whereas on page one talks about the density incentive, which I just spoke of. Um, on page two, the next whereas talks about the applicant's pre preference of providing off-site, uh, which we considered. Um, the next whereas talks about the park requirement. Um, we've discussed this at length, and it seemed that the board wanted to do the park fee. Um, we had a lengthy discussion about trails on a few occasions, um, and uh, absent a lot of things happening on this particular property and the properties to the south and the private road, um, the accomplishment of the trail easements or the trail uh, links here is, is difficult. Um, and there are trails to the north, uh, very clear trails to the north, including the Palmanac. But um, based on uh, our discussions, we would take a fee, which will be calculated at the time of the final, but currently uh, it's 13000 and change per lot, so that's 100 It would be assessed against, I say here, 11 lots. It's actually assessed against 10 lots because there's an existing residence. Uh, so that would be roughly 136,000 park fee. Um, we made ref uh, referral to the town engineer. Now the next five pages are the town engineer's uh, comments. They go through the common driveway. Um, this property is fronting off of a private road, a 30-foot private right away. It's going to have some improvements in there to country road specs. Um, but um, Christine had a lot of comments. She did say at the end of the comments she recommends approval that these could be addressed at the final the final maps that she gets, which is fine, but uh, they're all in there. It's important to note that uh, that road's got to be noted that it's a, a private right of way that's uh, never to be dedicated or can never be dedicated to the town. Um, and in her report, she talks about the trees, um, which they do have a tree plan that was submitted with the uh, road and drainage plans. Um, so that's, you know, it's, it's a lot of stuff in there. Um, and the applicant <laughs> has it. Um, she also advised that the applicant sit down with her to go over the, the items, which, of course, I will recommend that the applicant do uh, subsequent. Um, we also got some com comments back from the Conservation Board. Um, the wetlands have been uh, picked up in uh, the first point and noted. Uh, second point, which says the wetlands on the residential parcel to the northeast on the other side of the road are not shown. In fact, I think they got a plan after uh, the most recent plan. That plan that I have now does, in fact, show the pond on the other side, but it's also a man-made pond, uh, and nothing on that side of the road affects any of the, the lots in question here. 
Um, <coughs> point three, they talk about um, the reestablishment of natural wetlands on the property from the ponds, uh, but, but point out that it's not something that we typically do here. The reality is Marty's been out there, he's flagged the identified wetlands, and, and they've been incorporated into the project. So. Um, Number four, 292B referral, which we know. Uh, number five, they talk about establishing a conservation easement about that man-made pond that straddles both the county land and the, uh, and the town land. You know, I leave that to this decision to the board. I didn't include it in here. Um, but again, uh, as Marty has acknowledged, it's not a regulated wetlands. A lot of it, it's a man-made pond is sitting on the county land. I don't know how you establish a buffer, an easement around a man-made pond that's sitting half off of the property. So. I didn't include that in there. Um, like I said, it's not regulated. Um, and they asked for other things, the slopes, which we do actually have. Um, we went over that during SEGRA. Um, they went around the shifting, shifting of lots in uh, 10 and 11. Again, the preservation of the trees in the uh, <coughs> right of way, which has been incorporated into the plan. Um, and they support a trail easement the property, uh, which we know. Uh, we had comments from the, the Southampton Division of Fire Prevention um, that uh, is going to recommend uh, water mains and hydrants, um, and they will be shown on the final plans. Page um, seven. Oh, page seven. Sorry about that. And on the bottom of page seven, uh, landmarks came in with comments again. That goes on to page uh, eight. Um, they talk about um, preserving rather than demolishing the historic house. We had a very lengthy discussion about this. Uh, it is a beautiful house. It's a beautiful property. It's not uh, very visible from many spots. It's not a designated historic structure. Um, and, uh, you know, so there wasn't really much there. Um, it does say that the garage is incorrectly labeled on the map. That is correct. I think it's a horse barn, right? A horse stable. So if we could get that fixed. Uh, that is uh, accurate. Um, investigation of CPF. Look, CPF has looked at this property. So did the county. They both uh, declined uh, to make an offer, <laughs> you know, twice. So, um, you know, we're sort of beyond that point. Um, and then it talks about a anti-demolition covenant or donating of a house should it be, um, you know, taken down. And the applicant can always uh, do that. Um, the trails advisory, which they were at the last meeting, so that their comments were roughly the same, and they talk about a trail easement going through the property. The part of the problem, as I said, is it's, it all is coming out to a dead end, um, because it all comes out to the private right-of-way, which we had people uh, in this audience balking who live on the <laughs> street saying that they're not going to give uh, public access for a trail easement. So this is just one of those cases where it, African <coughs> property south of here, individual lots giving an easement to the public road, coming out to the private right away won't do any good, um, to be quite honest. Um, and I've looked at it at length. Um, on page nine, uh, the fire district didn't come back with any comments this time. My understanding it's on their agenda tonight. Uh, but I did put in their comments related to the pre application. I would imagine nothing's going to change. So they're recommending. Uh, the water main and then the location of hydrants, which will be shown on the, the final map. Um, the uh, next one, the Planning Commission said it's a matter for local determination, uh, but just provided a comment that the flagpole for Lot 11 is long. Uh, the Health Department uh, indicated that there is a pending application with their agency, and we know that they will need final uh, Health Department in order to um, come in, uh, for the application. Um, so I have uh, the resolve to do preliminary approval subject to um, some basic conditions. Most of the, as you guys know, on your final application right. is where we start putting all the covenant, you know, and all yeah. the setbacks. Can I, can I ask a question oh, before you go there? Um, on the man-made pond that straddles the property line, did Marty Shea have any recommendations as to how to handle that? As a condition? In any he way? didn't, other than, you know, they're recommending putting a a buffer or an easement around a man-made pond that they've acknowledged uh, isn't a regulated wetlands. Um, it's just, you know, I, beyond that, I don't know what more, you know. A buffer? <coughs> Barney recommended a buffer? Yeah, well, yeah, they're recommending a, you know, a buffer. But again, it's a, not a regulated wetland. So we typically, you know, don't establish buffers around 
unregulated wetlands. And particularly, we have this going on to the county property. How do we establish a buffer and easement on a man-made pond that's straddling county property? I just don't, you know, I just don't know. So, so the resolution of that is to just let it be as it is, unresolved. You know, it's it's a man-made pond on the property. I, you know, I don't know what more. You know, I could defer I'll show that here, um, and maybe the applicant, when I'm done, will have some you know, information. Okay. I would just say that Owen's gonna just gonna stay the way it has for the last however many years it's been there. We're not gonna fill it in because half of it's on county property. It's just, it's just gonna stay. <laughs> Let me just continue and then we'll leave. Anthony, can I just yeah. oh, please, speak please. on the Trails Advisory sure. Board? Um, you, you focused on the, um, the, the right of what the road, private road part of it, which we understand. But um, the, the Advisory Board was also suggesting a buffer on lots 10 and 11 because that, that is adjacent to county land where there are trails and people will having a buffer to protect both the home and the trail so that the trail isn't looking into somebody's windows right right um, um so there is they do have that recommendation but let me finish and then you guys can get up and um you know do this so they did recommend you know a, a buffer um part of the uh, adjacent this property part of the um what they're adjacent to will be the open space within the subdivision and then obviously the lots to the to the north there where they wanted some uh, buffers on there um, as well uh, I, I will let the board have the discussion with the applicant I wasn't particularly strong on that recommendation only because when we're establishing buffers um, in this particular case we have a buffer that we want to establish a lot of this property doesn't have woodlands on it but some of it does um, into what's going to be a sort of the open pasture type of um, environment. Um, these buffers are often difficult um, to manage if they don't have, you know, a very, very important specific purpose here. We're talking about some open space and, and a couple lots to the north. Um, you know, I don't know that I, it's up to this board that I would burden this particular application to put a buffer on a property for people who might go to some adjacent Suffolk County open space. Um, you know, the, I just, it, I don't have the recommendation. We could have the discussion with the, with the applicant and the, the board wants to recommend it. We, we could simply recommend it. That's, that's not a problem, but um, they have the recommendation. Um, you know, uh, buffering, uh, you, normally when you're trying to do buffer, you're trying to buffer uh, incompatible uh, land uses, incompatible activities uh, from one another. In this case, it's a, it's a 50 foot buffer. Um, you know, to protect people who might be using some, you know, uh, trails on Suffolk County land, um, and then with a lot of it adjacent to what's going to be open space here, and then, then some lots. I don't know uh, that we're going to get anything out of it. Um, part of the, you know, the the beauty of this property is, is the open, uh, you know, vistas um, that are on there, uh, and I get it, but I don't know that protecting you from the from an open space parcel. Remember, we got open space in this subdivision. We protected it, and that's the satisfaction. Um, but absent uh, that, I don't know that uh, an additional 50 foot is needed. Um, the building on, oh, let me just see here. Number two, the ownership of the open space needs to be noted. I believe it's going to be privately owned uh, so that it will need to be encumbered by a conservation easement. So that portion adjacent to the um, uh, county open space will in fact have a conservation easement attached to it associated with the required open space. Uh, the building envelopes to be removed. Um, number four, uh, note the density and sense of provisions of the town code and indicate that the proposed portable lots are being provided off site. Uh, compliance with the requirements of the uh, Southampton Office of Fire Prevention and Fire District for installation of water main and hydrants. Um, number six, uh, the final plot shall address the comments of the town engineer dated June 22nd, 2018, um, and full compl uh, fully comply with those recommendations, which may result in some modifications to the subdivision map. That's always typical. Um, number seven is noted by the town engineer. The project will conform to the speedies, uh, and I will always urge applicants to speak with the town engineer directly when it comes to the speedies requirements. Um, and number eight, um, the final plot shall have a uh, grading uh, 
detailed grading plan uh, submitted prior to the final plan submission. Again, they should go over with the engineer. The one part of that on the very last page, on page 11, where it says, and the installation of foundation, pavement, and or landscaping as soon as possible after soil disturbance. Actually, that's getting crossed out. Um, that comes from, this recommendation comes from a different, uh, uh, came from Vintage Vines, which, which was a different subdivision. So I don't know when or if, you know, they're building this out. So to put that particular about the foundation didn't make any sense to me, actually, after the fact. So um, whereas Vintage Vines had some type of phased development going on or something. Um, so all of eight is out or not? No, just the very last part of it that references the foundation, pavement, and landscaping. Anthony, um, number five, uh, I, we, we don't do a lo lot of preliminary applications, but it's not really a condition typically for, in other words, we're setting conditions for preliminary. Yeah, pool. yeah. Yeah, so I'm almost thinking omitting that. They couldn't, you know, the final, at the final application, they, one of the conditions is going to be submission of contract for water sure. insulation, and you know, so we could just omit that. Uh, number five, you mean? Everything else, I think, looks good. And um, I will add, by the way, if I may, may well, tell me if I should, uh, I just wanted to add something about the 292 referral at the final, or is that not even necessary? Oh, I said it in here, actually. Yeah, you did. You have it. Number one. See, that's it. It's yeah. in there. Number one. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So um, we'll hear from the applicant then and uh, it's their comments or response to the preliminary approval. Right, I was going to say. Uh, Bruce, you have to use the uh, podium, sorry, and just identify Bruce, yourself. Suffolk Environmental Consulting, you know, about the, the buffer. Is that this property is cleared to the corner. It's open to the property boundary, even up north. It's that's all. It's lawn with trees, that's what it is. Okay, and it's been that way because it's all been used for horse pasture and stuff. And so, to that point, when we do the final, we're going to have the terms of the open space right. outlined. And the other side of it is that the lots that are sitting up there are also going to be subject to the wetland setbacks on, on the one that shows uh, on the plan. Um, which, which is that, lot 10? Number 11, I so think. So there will be some um, buffering, provisions, natural. you know, the right. buffering by the very nature. But well, we also use split rail fences from time to which time. Which we can absolutely require at right. the time the final, which we normally It's do typical. Blue Martin, welcome as always. Are you, are you chilly, Jack? For the applicant, uh, David Gilmartin. But the, the resolution in its present form is acceptable to us. What's that? So I want to make it clear that the resolution in its present form is acceptable and we'll deal with, with some of the issues that yeah. we brought up at final. Okay. Okay. Very we good. Do we have a motion for motion. motion? Motion by Jackie. Second. Second by Phil. All in favor? Aye. Opposed abstentions? Six yes. Easy breezy. Thank you. Good report, Thank you. Anthony. Good report. Yeah, very good, Anthony. Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn by Phil, second by Blaney. We'll see you at six.